Filmmakers themselves had narratives that were almost bigger than the actual narratives they produced. And they were the kind of stories that you were not getting out of mainstream Hollywood. You know, obviously the go-to thing is those kind of like exploitation mindset. They're setting up these low-budget divisions to make movies that are just like their big-budget movies, but just for cheaper. I'm Dave Baker, and today we're talking with Ty West about balancing commerce and art in filmmaking. So there's this kind of groundswell of support right now for uh, low-budget films, which is kind of how you came up. How do you view the kind of cultural shift away from maybe big budget movies? There's just two distinctly different types of movies getting made these days. There's these very sort of small independent movies and then these like really large budgeted mainstream movies. And everyone likes to talk about how like the middle dropped out, which it did. So there aren't 30 million dollar movies anymore. There's like 100 million dollar movies and then there's like 100,000 dollar movies. From a profitable standpoint, you could invest $100 million into a movie and then make a billion dollars and be like, cool, we just made a $900 million profit. And like, you can understand that. Whereas if you make smaller movies, the risk is bigger because you're making more like personal challenging content. What's cool about that is you can have like autonomy for the most part because you can, the, the risk is small financially. So what's interesting to me are the small movies that are existing in you know, what's left of the independent film world and the festival community and uh, VOD markets and things like that because you're getting you're getting like real like filmmaker driven movies um, or at least story driven movies. Do you think that there's going to ever be a middle return? Do you ever think that that 30 million dollar market is, is it gone forever? We want everything to be so accessible and so instantaneous that it's very hard to justify spending a lot of money on something that doesn't connect with everybody because it's financially such a risk. People want um, Filmmakers to take chances and be brave and do bold new things and, and reinvent things and, and forge ahead. But people with money want the safest risk humanly possible. So it's weird that we kind of encourage the sort of artists to take chances, but the people investing in the artists want to take no chance whatsoever. And that's a kind of a confusing place to be in. And technology is changing so much that it's hard to say where it's actually going. You kind of just have to like ride the wave and hopefully have some sort of integrity that you're relying on and that's really that's the only kind of hope we have I think is to, that that the people who are making movies really believe in what they're doing and, and and despite whatever the trends are continue to do their own thing the money aspect of initially making your first movie is kind of going away like that before that used to be the how do we afford film how do we afford film how do we afford film and now that's kind of going away what do you think that the next biggest challenge for somebody that's starting to make their first movie is? My outlook is that there's two kinds of filmmakers. There's like personal filmmakers who are making a movie for a reason that matters to them. Whether it's a story about them or it doesn't really matter, but it's, it's a movie that the choices in the movie are very important choices from that person's brain. And then there are people who are making movies specifically for an audience's enjoyment. And those people are making movies that are just like, well, whatever makes it more accessible, more enjoyable, more entertaining, more profitable, more exciting, are the choices that should be made because I'm making it for them, I'm not making it for me. So I think that people fall into the two kind of camps. And there's people that they kind of blur the lines a little bit, but for the most part, it's kind of one or the other as far as I'm concerned. Now that you don't need so much money to make a movie, you can either do something that proves you are capable of doing something with a lot of money, or you can make something that s proves that you have something to say uh, artistically. Then in that context, do you, when you're starting to write a project, do you think about like commercial viability or do you just kind of go with your initial, like this is the story, it doesn't matter how dark or you know, only I'm gonna watch this movie, it, it gets, it's just me. Uh, I think I selfishly make movies for me, um, but I, I think that you know, my, my taste or my sensibilities are not outrageously commercial, but they're not so esoteric that people can't really wrap their head around it either. So, you know, I'm not making something that's like completely non-narrative and confusing. Um, but I don't, I don't think about an audience at all when I write a movie. I think if there's an idea that I have that excites me and that I don't like lose interest in it in a short period of time and it stays around, then there's something of value to that to me. And then I just hope that whatever my tastes are, there's, there's enough people out there that I can, that can sustain me continuing to do it. Do you think that uh, digital distribution and like direct distribution from filmmaker to audience members is going to change the content? Maybe. I mean, I think that's that's great. If that's the, the the problem with that though is like movies will always cost money because it requires a lot of people to work on it. So the small, the less money you have, the smaller the movie can be just in production value and just everything in general. But if you want to tell stories that are beyond your personal means, you need to partner with somebody that has deep pockets. And in a perfect world, you'll partner with someone with deep pockets who's like, 
down for what you're down for. But usually you're, you're part of someone who's like close to being down. And then it's this weird game of you trying to manipulate them into seeing the world the way you see it and using their resources. And it's a collaboration. And, and hopefully it's a positive collaboration. Otherwise it can be like a push and pull one. But now it just seems like the people with the deep pockets are not particularly interested in film as art. They're interested in film as entertainment. So if you're someone who also is interested in film as entertainment, then you're in a great position. If you're interested in film as art, there's less people that are just like, get out there and make something like radical. And what I really think is like, we just need people that are, whether it's independently wealthy people or a corporation, whatever it is, people with the money, should be like excited about taking risks also. That's what like art and life is about. and, and until we shake that, this, this idea of what we're making is, should be as safe as possible, I don't know how much you can really relate to that. Thank you so much, Ty, for coming in and talking about your movies. Yeah, thanks for having me.